What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. I am here with my good friend, Muhammad Awad. Mo, give me, give the viewers a little background on yourself. Where are you right now? And, uh, and how did we meet? So, yeah, like, thank you for the introduction, Andrew. My name is Muhammad Awad. I'm a player for Auckland City Football Club in uh, New Zealand right now. And yeah, how did we meet? Um, we met in we met in college, um, Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. Yeah, so I I transferred over to SIUE. Um, I think it was the fall of 2015 from um, St John's University in New York, and played played with you. Was it? Yeah, two years. Was it two or three years? Yeah, two years. Um, yeah, junior and senior. Yeah, junior and senior at SIUE. Me, yeah. We, yeah, so yeah, it was it was good two years. We did we did well. We won the conference, made it to yeah. the NCAA tournament, Sweet Sixteen. It was it was a good little run. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so let's start at the beginning because I think your story would be good for a lot of people because a lot of the people who watch this are um, international or abroad. How did you? What was the college process like for you? And how did you get over to the U.S.? Why did you want to get over to the U.S.? All that stuff. So the college, um, it all started with the academy that I joined. Um, it was it was actually um, one of the guys I think you'll know, um, Ben Cipolla. Yeah. He was a yep. he was a, he he was at um, um, Shattuck. So yep. yeah, so there was a, a lot of um, connections with um, universities in America. So um, it was important for myself and my parents to especially my parents to continue, continue with my education. Yeah. But I also wanted to pursue um, a career in football. Right. So it, was, it, it all made sense to, to go over to America, play at a, at a good level, but yeah. also getting a university degree out of it as well. So it was, it was, it was good. Yeah. What, what was, the, what were some of the hardships that you faced, you know, coming to a new country? Um, and how did you get through that? So yeah, one of I remember because like obviously coming from New Zealand, it's a small country. The, the climate's different. Yeah. So I I I usually you start in the fall, but how the calendar works in New Zealand schools run from schools start from about end of January, start of February to to like November. Yeah. So that's that's the full school year. Whereas in yeah. America, it starts in about August, right, and right. runs to about May. So one of the things that I faced was finishing school, finishing school in about November, then yeah. then then going to America in January. So over there right. in, in over there in um in 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 New York, it's it's yeah. I mean and it's winter over there. So right going from going from like basically summer into seeing snow for the first time, it was it was a bit right. different for me. So having to like get used to that and different different environment it was it was tough at the start having to oh, i had thought of like going back going back home yeah it was, it, was a, it was a bit challenging for me and but i always i'm always remember the conversation i had with my with my mom talking about this is something you wanted to do you just right. you just got there so it's you can you can come back or you can decide to stick it out and continue doing what you want to do so it was, it was yeah. good so it's all about just You'll get once you're over there. You'll you'll get a um, you'll get used to the living there. Right. Um. But it's it's a it's a big transition coming from like New Zealand. What from New Zealand to New York? It was about it was about an eighteen hour flight. So it's oh yeah. It's not. It's very far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So so was that what did it for you? The conversation with your mom because a lot of people. It's very easy. When you're in the hardship and you're in the hard times, it's very easy to just focus on the hard times and focus on, you know, oh, this sucks. Or, you know, you, you hear people whining and moaning about the situation they're in. But was it the discussion with your mom that got you to see the light at the end of the tunnel and focus on that? Yeah, it was, it was I, I still remember it vividly, the conversation. It was, it just got me, it just got me thinking like how, how like, how fortunate I was to be in this situation. Yeah. Right. So like not many not many kids can go from New Zealand to America 
with school paid for and everything and right and i do and do what they love like it's very and for me to like consider it to consider like leaving it, it just yeah it just it didn't sit right with me because i didn't want to look back and regret that opportunity that i had so that's right so you, so, there. so you remembered why you why you did it in the first place i think that's the key because a lot of people focus yeah. on like what is actually like what's going on rather than like why why am i doing this and again it's yeah if, it, if it's worthwhile it's not going to be easy right you know the things that the things that are easy to get are easy to lose and the things that are hard to get are hard to lose so um yeah. but but i mean that's a very yeah you know you obviously have to have a mature mindset to have that because a lot of the people listening are under the age of 18 or under the age of 20 and they they focus on the hardship all the time like oh practice and oh you know the coach is yelling at me or like you said the weather and all that stuff but you know having that mature mindset and understanding that you're lucky to be in the position you're in we don't see yeah. that necessarily here in the US because we haven't been to other other countries and other situations where people are trying to come here right yeah. and so um I think that was spot on and uh you know it's good that you had that it's good that you had that discussion with your mother too because a lot of times we like try to keep it in we try to keep it to ourselves and we always have these expectations for ourselves that we have to you know don't be soft and don't be like you know you know maybe i shouldn't be feeling like this and stuff like that but in the in the real in the we're all human beings we all have feelings and emotions and stuff like that it, it just comes in to are you going to listen to your emotions or are you going to you know talk that talk it out and figure out a way because because you obviously had a plan coming over here Right. It wasn't just a, you know, you were winging it. Um, you actually had a plan. So how did it go from how did it go from St. John's to SIUE? So, yeah, one of like one of the first things that um, when you come like another thing that I ran into that was a bit that was challenging was in the spring season. There's not a lot of like right. football, right? There's not a lot of actual like, like contact playing. So right. it was so I was a bit like just came got used to just playing and like training so it was it was a transition from a lot of like running and a lot of like gym work so it was, it was something that i had to like get used to as well and yeah where we were at, at like it wasn't because then we didn't have like a indoor facility like right. a turf or you could you could you could train so a lot of our like contact stuff was on a basketball court futsal so it was right at the time like yeah, I'm, I'm young and like a lot of like complaining, a lot of that stuff. But yeah, a lot, a lot of that was going on and like not not enjoying it. Yeah, but that's I think that's that's all part of the process when you're when you're going through it. Like right yeah. now, it's if I had put myself back in my in those shoes back then, it would I think I would have I think I would have like dealt dealt with things a bit differently. But yeah. that's that from those lessons have helped me become who I am right now. So it's right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything, but yeah. So the, so yeah, the spring, the spring was, was a tough time for me. My first semester in college. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then I decided to stick it out to continue co to come back for the fall season because that's, that's, that's the time you want to like, that's the time right. you're going to be playing games, doing like traveling, playing, right. doing what you like want to do. So I came back and um, that season, yeah, we didn't we didn't have the best of seasons. We were yeah. we had a good we had a good um, spring season, like so things were looking very good for the fall, but we just didn't live up to to the expectations yeah. that that were like that we put on ourselves. Yeah. So that that season ended, and then yeah, I was like, um, it's time for me to. I just wasn't enjoying it. So it was like, it's time for me to, I can't stay here. And like, because I thought of the reason why I came to America and yeah. like my friends were like, I had some, gr some good um, group of friends, New York city's great city. Like I was enjoying everything. School was good. I was enjoying everything outside of what I came to America. for. Right. So I was like, I right. can continue. I can continue to just like enjoy life and, and not really like, enjoy what I came here for or I could like look to go somewhere else and and enjoy the reason I came to America for which was to yeah. play to play football right so um 
yeah, I went into the into the coach's office and just told them, yeah, um, this is um, I'm just not enjoying it here. It was, it was it was quite tough because it was one of the first times where I had to have like honest conversations with with coaches or whatever. So it was I was it was like I wasn't I was dreading it, but I knew it yeah. had to be. I had to. It was something that I had to do to to like yeah to make myself like do what I want to do, not just stick right. in there because not stay in at St John's because. I don't want to like have an honest conversation with the coaches. Right. So, yeah, I went in there just just told them the reasons why I why I um why I'm not enjoying it here and and the reasons yeah. why I want to leave the reasons why I want to leave. And yeah, I mean they said like they were they were a bit disappointed. Um, but I told them yeah, it's it's nothing nothing against you guys. It's just something that I want to do. And and yeah. then and then in college, what happens once you decide to to decide to leave then you're not you're no longer like part of the team you don't train with right. them so um so what happened for me was um so i did it yeah at the end of the fall season and then i had to i had to have i had surgery at the end of that fall season for a sports hernia which was yeah. hampered me throughout the whole season so that yeah. fall so that like spring i was just rehabbing that and and looking to to find a new school and yeah. I was I was fortunate enough to one of my coaches back home was good friends with um he knew Mario Sanchez from Louisville yeah. so and he said that uh, Mario just got a job at SIUE and got me in contact with him and everything everything worked out well. Yeah. So um, yeah. So so my question to you is how do you when do you know? Because I think it's a, I think it's a skill to know when to quit, right? Because like. Cause like you could have said you could have stayed at St. John's and enjoy and enjoyed what you enjoyed and not enjoyed your football. But when, when do you personally say, yo, I, I need to stop doing this. I need to go in a different direction. Like it's not, you know, you didn't, you did, you, you quit, you quit that team, but you were, you were staying true to yourself and you went a different direction. When do you know when to quit and when to stick it out? Um, That's a good question. The way like, how I saw it was like, if I if I continued at St John's, then I was then I was quitting my dreams. If you if you get yeah, what yeah. I'm saying, yeah. Like if I if I like the way I continued to like to do what I love and like enjoy like my football was to go somewhere else. So I didn't I I saw it the opposite. If I stayed yeah. here, then I I saw myself as like quitting. Right. But if I was to go somewhere else then like that's me staying true to what to what i wanted to do so that that kind right. of that kind of made my decision easier right yeah no that makes sense to me that makes sense to me 100 percent. but you you see you see where you see where a lot of you know kids or coaches or whatever are saying oh don't be a quitter don't give up don't stop working and all this stuff and or or you i hear a lot of parents here where you know, young kids where it's like, you made a commitment to this team, you need to stick it out or whatever. And, but then I think about it and I said, well, you're just prolonging this kid from knowing exactly what they want to do. This kid might want to do freaking ballet or whatever. And you're making them do soccer every Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. When, if you would just, if you just listen to what they're saying and they say, oh, I don't want to come or I don't want to go to training today or whatever, I'd rather do this. Instead of saying, okay, let's try this. You're saying we got to stick it out. You made a commitment to the team and all this stuff. So that's yeah. why, because because I get where you're coming from 100%. And, you know, one day when I'm a parent, I'll be able to notice that in my kid. But a lot of a lot of parents mostly, but a lot of kids as well, don't know when to quit for the better, right? It's not yeah. necessarily quitting on, oh, it, does, it doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel right. But, you know, that's why I asked you, like, what? how do you know? Yeah, I think, like, that also goes back to the parents as well. Sometimes we, you see it a lot, like you said, where forcing the kids to go to like the trainings or whatever. It's yeah. it's like it's most of the times it's the it's the parent trying to live through the kid. Yeah, like they, sure. it's it's like they can't go to that training or be like the D one athlete. So right. they're trying to like use their they use their child as like that vehicle for themselves, but. Going back to your going back to your question, I think I think it's one of those things like 
you just have that you just have that feeling inside of you like everyone everyone will have it like when they when they know and like when they know it's it's not something they want to do any longer and right. like i think like it can it's a skill it's also a skill as well because sometimes people say like never quit never quit or whatever right but sometimes one of the hardest things like right. to do is actually like quit when you mm-hmm. realize like this is not for me anymore right and that that or you could just like stick it out and be like i'm not a quitter or you could actually be true to yourself right. and be like yeah this is they, they both take courage like sticking it yeah. out knowing that this is what you want to do versus like just like quitting because you know this is no longer like for you so like they're both for me i see them both as like having like strong courage for sure and i think i think you're hitting on it uh 100 is like you gotta be true to yourself right you said that yeah but yeah. but it's a lot of people the problem is they don't know themselves so how do they know if they need to be true to themselves if they don't know like you said at the beginning i had to stay true to my dream i had a dream of playing professional football i also had a dream of getting my education as well and i was i wasn't doing half of those right and yeah. so you're like okay i need to go somewhere where i can do both of these and be happy with with what i'm doing and so i think a lot of people miss the miss the mark miss the point because they either they either give up on their dreams or because 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 you you said you were having a good time right you were having a good time in this area but you weren't doing what you actually got here to do and and two things happen when that happens either some people get distracted and they're like well it's good though it's good like maybe i just need to work harder or maybe i need to do something else or whatever but I want to keep this. I want to keep the good that I have. But you were willing to go out and say, I'm going to start all over with a new group of people, a new uh, part of the country, all these different things in order to make sure that I'm getting everything that I said I was going to get. Right. And but that came from a place of you actually knowing what you wanted to get. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. So, yeah. So some people just some people give up this side because this side is so good. But you ended up, you know, getting all of it because you got the education, you got the school, you got the, you know, the friends and stuff like that. So you ended up getting it all because you gave up, you gave up what's good, right? Because the, because yeah, the yeah. bad wasn't, wasn't right. So you needed to make sure you got it right. Yeah. And um, yeah. so I think that comes from a place of actually knowing what you want and actually knowing yeah. what your goals are. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, like you said, yeah, I knew what I wanted. So Right. So the viewers or the young the young viewers listening, yeah. that that just goes back to like just sitting down with yourself, maybe writing it down like the reason why you're doing what you're doing and like yeah. what you really want to get out of it. So like that that gives you your why. So when when you're like finding yourself in these situations, then you can just refer back to right. to to whatever you wrote down and be like, okay, this is this is why I'm doing what I want to. And if it's if it doesn't align with your why, then then yeah, it, yeah you got to you just have to like you just have to rethink things and, and make the right decision for you. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up. I think that's where a lot of young players get tripped up is they think that oh this is a great opportunity. I've always wanted to play here and all this stuff, but what they don't realize is like there's so much there's so many things that go into that go into it that. You only look at this opportunity. You only look at this this little this little situation that you think is so so amazing and so important. But you're you're actually giving up a lot of the things that you said you wanted, right? Yeah. And so it's like it's like it all comes back to like what is your like priorities, right? Priorities, yeah. and you know that's just another word for goals. But um, yeah. a lot of people, you know, and Mario Mario really taught me this is like when when he would ask he would ask who wants to go, who wants to be a pro or whatever, and everyone's hand goes up. And he's just like, why are you putting, you know, you know, talking to someone like, why are you putting your hand up? You're just putting your hand up because he's putting his hand up. Like, what yeah. do you really want? What do you really want in life? And it actually like a few players quit the team, right? A few players quit. And they said that it was the best decision they made because if they hadn't done it, then they would still be, they would have played soccer for another two years and then realized after that two years, oh, this isn't for me. And then they would be. So they were they would have been two years delay from their goals yeah, from their 100%. actual goals. Hundred percent. And and that's something he taught me a, a lot. And I teach kids now, like, just, if you want to come out here and just have fun, just say you that. Just say that. You don't need to be. You don't need to say that you want to be a pro. Just like Johnny over right. here, 
because yeah. that's what he says. No, be true to yourself. What do you really want? And uh, and then, like you said, which is perfect, you have to have some sort of rubric for your life. Like, like once I know what I want, then I'm not going to settle for other things, right? Like you knew what you wanted and it wasn't right. So now we got to change it. And that's how you can filter every decision you make is through yeah. your rubric and through your, yeah. your priorities and your goals. Um, yeah. And the problem is people just take what they're given, right? Oh, yeah. oh, I got an opportunity. Okay, great. I can, I'll take it. Oh, I get an opportunity. Okay, great. I can take it. And you start going with the wind and coaches tell you this and the other coach tells you this and you just don't know, you, you just get lost. And so if you have a, an understanding of what you want, your priorities and your goals, then if this, if this decision doesn't align with that, then I'm not going to make that decision. Or if this yeah. opportunity doesn't align with that, I'm not going to make that, I'm not going to take that opportunity. Right. So, so yep. absolutely spot on what you said. Yeah. No, that's, that's really good. Especially what you said about <clears throat> just, yeah, ex exactly what you said with the, with everyone just putting their hands up. Like, yes, right. you're at, you're at division one, like college at a good, at a good team. Like, yeah. but that doesn't mean like you have to become a professional footballer. Right. It's like, yeah. Like, but one thing I also learned was like, <clears throat> Just being in that environment was yeah. going to help you. Was going to be was going to help you with whatever you wanted to do in life right. because, like, it, the the qualities needed or the, the mindset just wasn't wasn't like it. It doesn't change with anything you decide right. to do. Right, right. And so for me as a coach now, that's what I try to do with my players is like, yo, this is I'm not going to let you off the hook. Today, when you step over that line, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to push through mentally. But if you do it, you'll come out on the other side and you'll be you'll be stronger for it in every area of your life. It's not going to be just soccer. It's not going to be just, oh, I'm going to teach. Like, this is what I have a problem with. Oh, we're going to go to training today and we're going to learn how to pass the ball. And we're going to learn how to juggle. And we're going to learn how to head the ball properly and all this stuff. And yes, that is a part of the game and that should be incorporated. But what is that teaching me for life? Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go work at this company. Oh, what are your, what are your credentials? Oh, I can juggle. I can juggle 150 times. Oh, I can, I can take a good first touch. Yeah. Yeah. But what does that have to do with this? As opposed to people are going to hire, people might hire us because, oh, you play for SIUE and got to the sweet 16. We've never even heard of them, but you clearly persevered. You clearly, uh, you know, overcame hardship. I mean, that season I had two red cards and a broken arm, right? Yeah. Like, so so I'm like that year was that year was great at the end, but it's super tough. Yeah. And yeah. we all went through our struggles. The whole team went through struggles, ups, downs, two hour meetings at Butler, like all these different yeah. things. man. And yeah, I mean, when you look at that, I don't really, to be honest with you, I can't really remember many games just in general. Like I, yeah, I remember I like I remember I remember the Butler meeting. I remember yeah. I remember. uh you know, um, I remember bit, bits and pieces of the locker room conversations and just the hard, the hard, you know, yeah. you know, me, Devin, Jason, we all talk about, you know, different times that Mario yelled at us or in the video meetings or, you know, fun times and all this stuff, because yeah. that's what, because that's what sticks with us, that those kind yeah, of moments right. stick with us. And yeah. it's super, it's super cliche. You hear all these pros all the time, like, oh, I, I don't remember the wins and losses. I remember the locker room, but that's the actual truth. Is that you yeah. remember and you retain the lessons that you learn from soccer. You don't retain the necessary necessarily like the skills and the 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 you know here's a box for you and now you got to work on your step over or your ball mastery or whatever. No, yeah. it's about the lessons that I learned that you can take from this. If you want to go into business, if you want to go into a relationship, whatever, they're the same things. And uh, I I find myself referring back to those kind of lessons all the time. Like whenever I come up to some hardship in, in whatever I'm doing, I try to learn and remember, oh shoot, remember when we went through, uh, remember the Drake game, I broke my arm and I still made it through and all this different stuff, right? Yeah, we lost, we lost Muhammad. Um, um. Uh, as we get Muhammad back, um, great, great lesson there is that you got to realize that 
forgive the mess right here. Forgive the mess. Uh, wedding stuff, getting ready for this weekend um, when this is recorded. But the, the lesson there is that when you are when you are training, when you are getting better and working hard every single day and persevering, these are the lessons that you need to learn. These are the real skills of the game of soccer. The skills of the game of soccer are not step overs. They're not turns. They're not these different things, that, how to head the ball and how to shoot and all that stuff. What is that going to teach you when you are in a, a, a relationship and you're having a tough time? Are you going to use your step over to get through your relationship uh, hardship? Are you going to use your, like, if you're getting behind on your bills as a, as, a, as a father of two kids, are you going to rely on your step over and your long range shot to get you through those hard times? Or are you going to be able to persevere and push through, right? Here's Muhammad. Muhammad's back. Get him back on. Andrew, yeah. There he is. Good. Um, yep. Yeah. So we just. So, so I was just. I was just continuing on about you know. Yep. The skills of soccer. The skills of soccer are not necessarily just step over. How to shoot from long range. How to cross a ball. It's the perseverance. It's the the uh, coming back from behind. It's managing a lead. It's, um, you know, it's being able to work with teammates, being able to um, communicate to other people and other players effectively. There's a lot of skills in the game of soccer, but we're too busy, you know, focusing on our ball mastery or focusing on, yeah. you know, uh, I need to get a personal trainer so my, tech, my, technical, my technical skills can get better. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, missing, we're missing the point of the game of soccer. And, and, all, and also, you know, we can talk about this real quick. With the whole new European Super League, we're we're focusing a lot now on money and output yeah. rather than the player, the understanding yeah. of the, the the understanding in in the the, I mean the 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 mental aspect of the game. You know, you saw the Liverpool kid recently yeah. who who committed suicide, but yeah. now now and now and now what is Liverpool doing? They're going to another league. I mean, yeah. the the mental side of the game is not talked about focused on they don't care about the mental side of the game it's 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 the most i would say it's it's a, a lot more mental than it is physical mm -hmm. because yeah. like because one thing is like like you said there's going to be there's going to be ups and downs like that's in life and everything there's going to be ups and downs but the mental side, like being understand, like understanding that side of the game or life, just understands that everything's just a cycle. Like, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the ups. Like, you can't. It's it's an end of, right. It's like it's you got to enjoy the ups, but also understand that nothing lasts forever. That right. those ups, one day are gonna like you're gonna have some low points, and then yeah. when you get to those low, when you get to those low points, and like just. Like you understood that the high points weren't gonna be there forever. Right. The low points are the low points are just gonna are exactly the same. That's just how it works. Uh, right. Not getting not getting too attached. Yeah, we we just won the championship. Like everything's great. Like yeah, maybe maybe the next start of the next season. Like you hurt yourself and you're out for the season. Like that's a low. Yeah. But then understand that yeah, I'm gonna like just like the championship was great. It, it didn't last forever. Like we're back into right. the new league now. Just like this injury, it's not going to last forever. I'm gonna get back. Right. Get back playing. So it's it's all about that mental side of like, not not being attached to to the outcome, not being like com completely attached to the outcome. Like understanding that yes, it's gonna yes, it's great or it sucks, but everything's gonna come around. Like I'll experience both sides of 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 the coin. Yeah, because I, I, I deal with that every day, thinking about that and like talking to kids and stuff like that is like, especially with injuries, injuries is, is the easiest one to, you know, sort of use as an example is as soon as you get that injury, you think the world is over, you're done, depending on the injury, obviously, you think you're done. And yeah. you got to, I mean, and, and it's very easy to look at it and say, you know what, yeah, I'll be back, I'll be stronger, I'll be all this stuff. But what about on a Wednesday when it's cold and rainy out, you have to go to physical therapy and you haven't seen any any you know progression in the last four or five days nothing's changed yeah. it's going to be painful all these different things and you just lose hope at some period of, of of time and so you know it's we always say process over prize and all that stuff it is the truth 100 percent. it is the truth but you said it perfectly like get don't forget about the outcome 
like do things do if you can get to a place where you are doing the right thing irregardless of the outcome like if i like if i'm injured and i just i'm like i'm just gonna go to pt every single day right i know i know they only told me i need to go four times a week but i'm gonna go every single day at the same exact time every single day and if i don't if i don't ever play the game of soccer again that's fine i'm just gonna do this i'm just gonna do this that's when you start getting dangerous as a human being because yeah. Because I'll tell you right now, you're guaranteed to get better, period. Yeah. Even if you don't, even if, even if you, if you, even if you promise yourself, I'm going to do this, even if I don't see any progression, anything uh, good comes out of it, I'm just going to do it. First of all, you're yeah. going to see progression. And second of all, if you can, if you can do that and you can find, you know, comfort and relaxation in the process and, uh, and have a good time in the process, there's nothing you can't do. There's absolutely nothing you can't do. 100% like that's that's one thing um I'm realizing more now like it's right yes yes like I want to play in the like the top leagues or whatever right. but but that's not gonna like when I look back when it's when like when I when I look back at the end of my football career like right now like what I'm looking at like what do I do what do I do every day to be the best like yeah like the best version of myself like right. when i went to training when i went to training that i was i like present in training that i right. did i get the most out of that training session like am i am i doing the other things like am i is my am i sleeping well am i doing right. all these things because because like that's that's all i can control like i can't control what what happens like like what like what clubs sign me or whatever like that's right that's not really that's not really out of my control but what i control is like how i show up and and that's right. if you can if you can tick those things off then then that yep. just gives you like that inner peace of like yeah i right i had a good i had a good go at this like this is what i did i was i was happy and when it's yep. all done like i'm gonna take those lessons into whatever i want to do next which will which will present itself like you'll know what you right. want to do next yeah. yeah um a lot of kids right now are like oh i need to work harder i need to i need to you know work on my weaknesses and all this stuff and first and foremost i would say you know work on your strengths not your weaknesses you know because if you work on your weaknesses you're going to just weaken your strengths right yeah. and so so for me um for me i i tell them every single day like you don't you don't need to work harder right you don't need to work harder and i've been saying this recently this is sort of my my controversial statement but i don't think ronaldo and messi got there because they work hard i think they got there because they're consistent over a 25 30 year period that's where it got them obviously obviously having a sporting lisbon facility and coaches and all that stuff will help you get to a much higher level than someone who's playing you know in in the streets or whatever but i always like to think of it like and you said it perfectly you know, I want to be the best best version of myself, right? So you can't control whether or not you were born in Portugal and played for Sporting Lisbon. You can't, you can't, um, you can't, uh, you can't decide whether or not you want to play at Barcelona, right? Like Barcelona yeah. has to decide. But can you do the thing? Can you make the most out of what you have, right? Yeah. Can you make the most out of what you have? And instead of working harder. Can you be more consistent and better at the things you're already doing? This is one thing that I've had to really work on is, you know, I was doing, I was working, I was waking up at four, four thirty in the morning, put, trying to put in work all day. And I realized that I, I was making my, I was having, I had more time, but I wasn't doing as much in that time. So I, I shrank the time. I've, I've shrunk the time. So now I'm getting more sleep. And when I'm doing the work, I'm way more focused and I'm putting in way more work and getting more done. And I've and I've sort of shortened my to do list a little bit as well because yeah, now I'm yeah. getting a hundred percent of my to do list done as opposed yeah. to 65, 70 percent of my to do list and yeah. feeling bad about myself and feeling like I didn't yeah. do enough and being tired and yeah. Yeah. and so you said it very well and I I just want to say it explicitly is do first of all what you said do more with what you have so be the best person you can be stop trying to be messy stop trying to be Ronaldo and just be the best version of yourself. And that comes from doing the right actions every single day with yeah. the, the doing, doing things you're already doing. Like you said, controlling the controllables, do the things that you're already doing better and more consistent period. Yeah. Yeah. And that, well, that I think with the young viewers now is like, like, like you said, like 
it's there's that there's that thing going around where it's like yeah you have to work hard like so you see like young kids like just i mean it's there's nothing wrong with it but right just just doing things because they think they have to be doing something right like right. going to the park to like to i don't know to do some ball mastery because they think if they're not doing this then like they're being left behind or yeah but when when it comes to like to the training that to the most important thing for them to improve like going to the training session they might not they might not be giving it 100 percent because right. they're doing things outside of that training session that's that's not like that's probably fatiguing them for them right. to do to get the most out of that training session so like doing i wouldn't say it's unnecessary but it's right. like like you said like you you waking up 4 30 having a long day yeah. but getting like not getting the most out of right. that time you you were you were whatever you were doing yeah. versus like shortening it but getting yeah. like being a lot more productive i think right. that goes to like to like i don't know let's say you have you have training session at i don't know six six p.m in the evening yeah instead of doing like that one and a half two hours of like right. ball mastery on yourself you know i'm not saying that's wrong but like you yeah. just have to weigh it up versus like am i going to go to training like fresh where I can right. get most of it or am I going to go into that training session a little bit fatigued where I can't right. get the most out of like, could you like that stuff is important, like to, to a certain extent, but you get your most improvement out of actually like playing the game right. against other people, like not yeah. doing like, not doing like drills because like I see drills as like something that being, you're being told to do. Yeah. And like, you're just, you're just going through the motions of it versus being in like a game situation or like rondos or whatever, where you have to, make yeah. decisions because when you think like if we take it back to life life is all about decision making right and if you in a in a in a drill you're not making any decision you're being told what to do like do this like yeah, yeah do that whereas then when you're in a group environment and you're playing then yeah. you have to make decisions like all the all the all the elements of like life and like football are all in that area so right. that's where you get your that's where you get your biggest improvement, I believe. 100%. And I think um, that's why I started this whole thing is like video analysis is where, you know, I had been doing video analysis since I was like 15 years old at, at Shattuck because they we were one of the only clubs at the time who videotaped our games and I was able to watch them. And I, I developed my own strategies on how to get better through that. Yeah. Um, then, then obviously Mario came in. Like we had been doing it way way before that you know donnelly did that um uh corn did that a little bit but when uh when mario came in it was a little bit more accountability it was we didn't have like we didn't have like arrows drawn on the field and all this stuff it was literally just like yo andrew you didn't run back here what the heck yeah or yeah. or oh andrew why are you flicking the ball in the middle of the field or whatever like it was an accountability it wasn't necessarily like oh we need to do this 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 and this there was a yeah. there was a, an element of that, but it was like a five like there. Were, I remember one. I remember one video session. It was literally like a two minute video session. He just showed us one clip, and he's like, "This isn't good enough." And then uh, the next clip was us doing it right. This is how we should be doing it all the time. Does everyone understand? Yeah. Yep. Close the computer. Yeah. All right, let's get out there. And and that changed my that changed my outlook on video analysis, right? And so I think you're you're hitting it right on the head. Is that you're going to get them. And I, I say this to everyone, the most important thing that where you need to be your hundred percent best is first the game. If you're not playing well in the game, what the heck is any of this for? What is any of this yeah. for? Yeah. The second one is team training. If you're not playing well in team training, how the heck are you going to play in the game? Right. Yeah. And so um, team training is, uh, is the second most important. And then the third one is the individual sessions by yourself or whatever. And I think that you have to have an, an idea and under, understanding of what you actually need to work on and stop doing yeah. just general, whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. Ball mastery yeah. is very general and like, Oh, I'm a center back. Why am I doing step overs and touch to the right and Cruyff and all this stuff? That's not what I do in a yeah. game. Right. Yeah, and so, so I, I've told a lot of people, I said, going back to consistency, 10 minutes after every session, 10 minutes, you know, if I'm at the top of the box, I'm putting, I'm hitting five with my right, five with my left, and I'm done. That's it. Yeah. Like you don't need yeah. to be doing hundreds and thousands of reps. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. Because because I got to be ready for team training. And 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 one thing that really hit me, the epiphany that hit me was we, a lot of people on this podcast 
and myself and on other podcasts and whatever have said that the game is, you know, 85% mental, right? Yeah. So then why do we work 85, 90% on our footwork or on our agility or on our strength training? When if 85% of the game is mental, we should be working 85% on our mentality, right? Or our understanding of the game or our perspective or, you know, our movements and all the things that we need to do better. So yeah. there, there's this huge, you know, shift that needs to be made in youth, in youth soccer where we're focusing yeah. more on putting them, putting them in tough situations, game-like situations where they can improve. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, like, that's, that's really, that's bang on because like I said, the mental, that's, it's the most important part. I'm, I'm starting yeah. to learn that as well. Yeah. <laughs> where it's, where it's, and then you can, you can, that's something you can also, you work on through, through the time that you, I mean, the time that you spend, I don't know, in the morning or right. instead of, instead of like kicking your phone first thing in the morning, can you just starting off with a couple of minutes of just being, being present or right. just doing a bit of meditation or something? Cause you don't have to like, whereas I think a lot of people, what they do is like, they see something and then they just, they just dive like straight into it where, yeah where exactly. it's, it's not it's not sustainable like okay yeah. I, this person like i don't know ronaldo he meditates 30 minutes in the morning right. like i'm gonna like since ronaldo does it like i'm gonna do right. it as well 30 minutes and then they start off they maybe do it for one or two days right and it's just not sustainable for them they're, and then they and forget then they, it they forget about it they forget about it like but <laughs> if you're doing it like building that it's all about building right. small habits where it's okay i'm gonna ronaldo does it for 30 minutes okay great I'm going to start off with one minute a day. One minute, like, right. One minute. When I start off in the morning, first thing I do, I'm just not going to check my phone. I'm just going to go find somewhere in my room, sit down, just, just sit down and be present, close my eyes for one minute. For one minute. Yeah. For one I minute. mean, yeah. it, the, 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 best, the best way to start a habit is literally make it, make it to where it's way easier to do it than it is to not do it. Like imagine, yeah. imagine you have, you know, 18,000 whatever minutes in a day. Right. You have a or yeah. that's not true. You have a lot of minutes in a day. Right. You have a lot of minutes in a day. Yeah, yeah. You can't take one of them yeah. to just sit there and be present for a second. At that point, it's yeah. it's way it's it's easier to do it than it is to not do it. And now you yeah. and one day you might be like, you know what? I'm, I really enjoy this. I'm going to do it for five minutes and then you do yeah. it for five minutes. But yeah. but the minimum is going to be one minute. Yeah. Right. And yeah. once I've done yeah. one minute, yeah. check box is checked for the day. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But if you if you say I'm gonna do it for thirty minutes, ah, yeah, my schedule my schedule is looking a little bit hectic, and and maybe I wake yeah. up a little bit late or whatever. It's like you could still yeah. wake up super late, and still you could do yeah. one minute, yeah, right. So yeah. any habit I try to make it like easy. So for me yeah. now, my biggest thing is like I I used to say I'm gonna go to the gym five five times a week, right? Yeah, and and I just felt like the days I didn't go to the gym, I felt. Like this is, oh, this is not bad. You know, I'm not going to the yeah. gym and, but I'm still, you know, whatever. And so I'm like, I need to go every single day, period. And so my, my, my box is I need to go to the gym. If I, if I walk through that door, box is checked for the day, done. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we have a gym right here, literally like 50 yards away. So I'm like, yeah. if I don't go, it's way worse. Like it, it, it's way easier for me to go than it is to not go. Yeah. And so now I'm going every single day and you know, eventually that box is going to get higher. Once I've done it every single day for a month, two months, now yeah. we need to start saying, okay, now I need to spend 30 minutes in the gym. Okay. Yeah. Once I'm in there for yeah. 30 minutes doing, doing, staying active or whatever. Okay, great. Box is checked. Yeah. So the, so the minimum is always going to raise itself, but you yeah. start seeing those compounding uh, yeah. actions start happening. Yeah. That's, ex that's bang on. Like you could literally be like, I'm going to go to the gym five times. Like you said, I'm going to go, you yeah. said every day, but someone could be like, I'm going to go to the gym three times a day. Yeah. That could just literally, at the start, that could just literally mean going to the gym, like walking through those doors and coming back out. Yeah. Because exactly. you're, you're actually, you're starting to build that habit right. where it's like, it's going to get to the point, like I'm here. Why don't I actually just Might do, as well do something? Like yeah. Five minutes or something. Um, five minutes, I might jump on the bike for five minutes. Okay, I've done something. Yeah. Okay. And then you're just, it's got, because when, like, it's a, it's a good feeling when you say you're going to do something, 
and yeah. you do it like and you're, you're constantly getting that because um because it's all about like i don't know it's it's the response you get from like doing doing like the habit yeah. so it's, if, if it's a you get a good feeling okay yeah I'm, this is like i feel good when i go to the right. gym so you'll realize that more often than like you'll start to build that habit of actually going there how many times you say or or, or more than how much you're gonna how much you say yeah. you're gonna go to the gym Bro, I mean, my 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 uh, mentality changed completely because I I used you used to think like when I go to the gym, I need to make sure that I'm just grinding, putting in a hundred percent or whatever. And because of COVID and me having to leave Germany and stuff like that, and coming here now, I really hit that wall where I'm like, what am I even? What am I training for? What am I training for? I'm not training for the game on Saturday. I'm not doing all this. So I had to make a make an internal decision that. Okay, now I'm training for longevity in my life, and I'm training to stay healthy, and I'm training to do all these different things, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but now I look at it and say, like, I look at it as like I'm filling my cup every single day, right? And if you know, if if going to the gym is like me putting you know a, a decent amount into the cup, then if I actually put in work and actually yeah. whatever that means, if I put in 15 minutes or 20 minutes of work then that's just extra stuff. That's just extra. So, so this yeah. actually happened to me yesterday is I was doing enough of body exercise and, you know, I was putting, I was doing well, heavy weight, whatever. And, yeah. and I got to, you know, say it was, I was supposed to do three sets of 10, right? I did two sets of 10 and I was getting to the ninth and 10th rep of the second set. And it was really tough and I had to push through it and I did it. Yeah. And I said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm yeah. going to end on a yeah. high because you know what's going to happen next one. I'm going to put in, the, it's going to be tough and I'm going to push through it and maybe I get it, maybe I don't. But in my head, I'm going to, like you said, like you got to have a win. If you have a win then your brain's going to be yeah. like, oh, we got to do this again. We got to do this again. Yeah. And yeah. so, so I won. I did more than I said I was going to do. I said I was going to go to the gym. Now yeah. I'm actually putting in the work and I really, really push myself and great job. And now we're done. And now, yeah. And now I feel myself like, oh, I want to go back to the gym. I want to do like yeah. subconsciously. Yeah. I'm like, I want to go. I want to go back. I, I see a little bit of a difference. I want to go back. And so, yeah. Um, more of the story that we're saying to any, to the people listening is start start small. Start small. Yeah. Start so yeah. easy that if you don't do it, it's it's easier yeah. it's easier to do it than it is to not do it. Start super small, um, sure. and just keep that consistency because the consistency is the goal. It's not the it's not the yeah. the action or it's not the like we said at the beginning it's not the outcome it's yeah. consistency is the goal if I can stay consistent if I can get 10, 10 days or let's start with if I can get a full week of going seven days I can step into the gym seven days a week this week great if I can now now can I do that for two weeks now can I do that for three four five weeks yeah. and then yeah. at that point you will you people are just like oh wow. I'm sure people are like, oh, wow, I'm losing weight and I'm just walking to the gym, walking into the gym yeah. because yeah. just that mentality of getting better and, in, and improving just a little bit every single yeah. day starts making starts giving you this this new identity and this new feeling. And once yeah. you have that, once you believe in yourself and once you I mean, yeah. it's just incredible what you can do at that point. Yeah. yeah, it just becomes it just becomes like who you are, like, right. Exactly. I like I. I go to the gym every day like it's yeah. it's just it's just who I've become like it's just right. a part of me and like you're not you're not thinking about it like it's no longer shit I have to I have to go to the gym today it's yeah. like it's like it's you just bang like okay it's right. it's that's something I do every day like it's right. something it's part of me so yeah right. you, and and once you do that in one area of your life it's done right once you do that in one area of your life yeah. you can start moving into other areas of your life oh i've always wanted to you know you know for me personally i feel like i'm starting i, I feel like i'm in college now because mm. for me personally college i learned absolutely nothing and now i'm like oh okay now i'm gonna read books that i actually want to read and i want to yeah. read you know 30 minutes for me it's 30 minutes a day because yeah. i actually i actually like reading and i'll do it yeah at yeah. first I started out, oh, I want to read an hour a day or whatever, but no, that's yeah. too much. That's too yeah. much. So let's 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 scale back. Okay, 30 minutes a day. Okay. And now I'm studying little things every single day and getting better at, incrementally because of the same the because of the same strategy that I use for the gym. And you yeah. use that same strategy in every area of your life. And next thing you know, you look around, you're a completely different person. You're actually you're you know, you're actually uh where you want to be or closer yeah. or whatever. And and 
in, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't take that long, but yeah. we want overnight success and we want to get, you know, we want to get a pro contract at the age of 16 yeah. and you know, all yeah. this different stuff. And yeah. so it's, it's the small daily wins that at the end of it all yeah. equal yeah. very, very big success. No, I, I agree with you on a hundred percent. Like, like you said, I'll, I'm the same in college. Like, yeah, I, I got a degree, but what I've been able to learn in like the past year, it's, right. it's something that's like what I've learned in the past. Like I've learned the most in my life in the past year through just right. through like through social media, actually. Yeah. Like coming across, like I, I, I call them mentors. Right. Like these people, like they, they don't know me, but I see them as right. my mentors because of the knowledge that they're, that yeah. they're sharing on their podcast or on their social media or the books right. I'm reading. Like, like, like you said, like you're, we're both reading books we we want to read and getting something right. out of it, and like, who like some books that I've read like has like it's not football books it's just right it's it's like it's books about like the I don't know the brain or the subconscious right the subconscious mind like for me that's that's it's had a massive impact on me sometimes you right. would you would like tease me about I don't score enough goals yeah but like recently I've been I've been scoring like. Like right. I'm not, I'm good form of scoring goals. It's not because I've technically become better, right? Exactly. It's because I've, it's because I've been able to like now see myself as a goal scorer, like rewire my subconscious. Yeah. And that's and that's and I haven't gone out and like smashed balls for right. I don't know a hundred balls a day left and right foot. It's, right. it's not that. It's not that I couldn't do that. Like I've trained right. technique. I've trained technique my whole life. It's just like switching that, switching yeah. like how I see myself. Like right. basically, I don't know through affirmations or whatever, like right. reprogramming my subconscious to see myself as as a goal scorer, like someone who creates goals or score. I always saw myself as like a goal creator, but like yeah. not someone who scored the goals. Whereas right. now, like yeah, it's just changing how how you actually see yourself. It's it's massive. Yeah. Like it's you people might think it's yeah, it's it's woohoo right. or yeah. whatever, but it's it's literally how you see us like. How you see yourself is like is what dictates like your reality. That's how I yeah. I, I I truly believe that. For sure. Well, yeah. Mo, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate yeah. a great conversation. Um, anyone watching, yeah. make sure you guys listen, take notes, um, yeah. and 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 well, rewatch and take notes. But yeah, yeah. great conversation, great um, yeah. great insight. Really appreciate you being on. Uh, we'll have to get you on again. A lot more to talk about subconscious and all that stuff. I think that's super yeah. important. But uh, yeah, yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah. All right, bro. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Yep. See you soon. All right. See you, bro.